Welcome to this unboxing video. My name is Betsy. I'm the blogger behind Spark Creativity. And today I'm going to walk you through Jennifer Gonzalez's tool, amazing tool, the teacher's guide to tech. She's got a new edition out for 2020. And I wanted to give you a peek inside the digital covers. Um, so you could see for yourself what this tool is like. It's really unique. It's not like anything I've ever used for the classroom before. And personally, I love it. So I wanted to show you why. When you get inside, you see this cover page and you see some introductory materials and then you get into the main index and you're going to see a wealth of different tech tools. You're also going to see up at the top here, you can have a little introduction to the guide, key tips to do with technology, the tools, which is the bulk of the digital portfolio, and then the terms, um, which I also think is a really helpful section, especially if you feel over your head sometimes in technology, clicking on the terms is really cool. You can go in and see all these different um, terms that you may hear all the time from people who know all about tech. And I'm just speeding through here to get to one of my favorite parts of the terms, which is the Google cheat sheet. And it tells you all about these different tools that you hear thrown around in Google. And it allows you to sort of understand them all and define them all. And you can keep going through. There's all these different tools or um, terms defined. But that's not what we're mostly going to be focusing on. We're going to go back to menu up here. And one of the things I like about this is how it's all hyperlinked. It's really easy to go back and forth from the different sections. So you can see over here the tips. There are these different articles. Why bother learning about technology? A look inside the lives of three tech-enhanced teachers. How to do tech without losing your mind. Um, Jennifer has just years of blog posts and interviews and incredible pedagogy research that she's done for her website, Cult of Pedagogy, and her podcast, which I enjoy, the Cult of Pedagogy podcast. Um, and so she can draw on that throughout the guide. She can link out if she's talking about a tool that relates to one of her helpful blog posts or an interview with um, an author that she's done in the past, she can link out so that if you are really interested in a tool, then you can dive deeper. So I'm just going to take you through here and show you some of the tools that I got excited about when I was first looking at this, since this is an unboxing. I just got this and I looked through it a little bit in advance so that I would have the best things to show you in this unboxing. But these are just some things that caught my eye and I got excited about. You can see there are so many tools in here. Let me quickly show you through all of these tools. These are all different categories with the with the tools that Jen thinks are most helpful inside each category. And look, there are just so many. <laughs> so we're going to start in the content libraries section. So if I click on that, I get this little introduction to content libraries and I learn about possible classroom uses for them. And then I'm going to go through and look for this tool called My Shakespeare. And this is just one of the many content libraries shown and linked here. But look at this. This fantastic site starts with the full text of five of Shakespeare's most popular plays. Ooh, that's helpful. <laughs> and then she goes on, but there's so much more. Each play also comes with modern English translations, between the lines commentary, audio recordings that sync with the written text, videos of actors performing key scenes, and video interviews where actors talk in contemporary language about their character situations. This seems so helpful for so many English teachers. And in my years of teaching English and writing about how to teach English and podcasting about it, I had never heard of my Shakespeare. So that was a tool that right away jumped out at me as really exciting. So I'm going to go back to the menu now and show you another one. So this time I'm going to go to the feedback section, which all English teachers will intuitively know is going to be really important. So we go to feedback and think about um, how we can use technology to make commenting on papers and um, explaining next steps to students a little simpler. And there's a lot out there that can help us with this. And I'm going to go to a tool called Kaizena, which I've heard of, but haven't really um, dived into in depth. So I wanted to see what Jen had to say. Kaizena. With this web app and Google Docs add-on, teachers can leave many types of feedback, written comments, voice recordings, links to lessons on a concept related to the issue found in the student's writing, and rubric-based feedback using rubrics created inside the app. 
to save time, ooh, I always like to save time, <laughs> teachers can build a library of frequently used text or audio comments to pull from. When students receive feedback, they can reply to it with voice or text. So this seems like a really cool tool to me, something I would definitely be interested in diving into. You can record an audio library of comments and then you can just insert them into students' papers. So you can just teach a student how to make a better thesis and then put that in um, for poor theses a thousand times, right? You don't have to rewrite it every time. And you can actually spend a little more time creating these comments, these voice comments, because you know you just have to do it once. And that seems really helpful to me. It also seems to me that by recording voice comments, you're giving students the opportunity to learn on a deeper level. You're kind of forcing them to listen. They can't just toss their paper in the trash. Um, you've actually recorded a narrative for them to listen to, and I think that's going to be meaningful to them. And of course, there's all these other tools that Jen mentioned, which I didn't really know about. I knew that Kaizena was for recording audio commentary, and that seemed really helpful, but I didn't really know about these links to lessons, which seems really lovely, um, or that you could create rubrics inside the app. All right, next I wanted to show you a little section on infographics, which I think is a really important and helpful new tool for teachers. So let's go to infographics. And you can see here she's got an example of an infographic, a little information about how to use infographics, and then she's linked to her four um, tools that she thinks would be most helpful. I have never heard of Infogram, Vengage, or Visme, and they all seem like they would be worth exploring. Um, but I have heard of another teacher using PictoChart with a lot of success. So I like that it's featured here. Um, and I also like knowing what some of the other tool options are in this space. Okay, so we're going to go back to the menu, and I'm going to look at one more section that I know is meaningful to teachers of all areas, including English, and that is classroom management. Let's see. Oops, I passed it, guys. Let's go back. Here we go. Classroom management. And again, we're going to see some information, some background information from Jen, kind of categorizing the different tools. Um, and you alone would know which of these tools would be really helpful for you as you look at them. Behavior flip, bouncy balls, class charts, class craft, class dojo, classroom cue, classroom screen, and go noodle. But I was particularly attracted to bouncy balls. <laughs> I think this looks hilarious. So you can get a screen with bouncy balls on it. And as long as your classroom is quiet, the ball stays settled at the bottom of the screen. But when students start to get louder, when the hum of conversation becomes too intense, the, the balls start to bounce around on the, on the screen. And I feel like that would be like a really helpful visual to just show students the noise level is getting a little too high. So this would be fun and kind of silly. It probably wouldn't work for like really big behavior management issues, but if you have a class that's pretty good and you just wanna do a little fun thing to help them keep on task, I feel like the bouncy balls is, is something that would be fun. And I've certainly never heard of it before. I opened up Jen's Teacher's Guide to Tech. So um, you guys, I just wanted to give you a little information on the Teacher's Guide to Tech because I think it's lovely and wonderful. Um, and I had no idea what it was going to be like when I first got it. I thought it would just be kind of a standard ebook, and it's really nothing like any ebook that I've ever seen before. I love all the hyperlinks. I love how you can just jump out to blog posts and interviews um, and helpful links as well as to all of the tech tools themselves. So there you have it, the teacher's guide to tech.